Hello everyone, so in this tutorial we're going to be coding the slider on your screen right now using just HTML and CSS. Okay, so here we are in Sublime with an absolutely blank canvas. So now we need to make our HTML skeleton, which in Sublime is simple. Type HT, enter, and you get the whole skeleton set up for you. Now I'm just going to link a font that I'm going to be using later. So this is just Lato, which is hosted by Google. So pay no attention to that. You don't need that for this to work. And then what we do need for it to work is a style sheet. And the style sheet I've defined is in a CSS folder. And it's called style. And it obviously is a .css file. And leads to this file. So I'll do the asterisk. I'll put in some default parameters here. So I want margin of zero for everything on the page by default. I only want margin on so if I've defined the margin. And then list style none we're not going to be using this this is just good practice and then decoration text decoration is not blink it is none and as you can see so far there will be no difference whatsoever to the page these are just some default parameters that need setting up now we go back here and the first thing that we need to do is create our main div so we're going to call it slider so div class e div class <laughs> equals slider and then go down a few lines and close it off and then inside we're going to create our first slide so this is a content slider not an image slider if yours is just an image slider you don't need to do this this div but if you want content so you can put html content in there as well as just images then follow this uh, this part so the first class is called slide because it is literally one of the slides and then inside this we have to relate some of the images that or some of the content so as you can see here i've created some blank slides in photoshop so they're just colors these will be in the if you want to just test it out these will be in the download so now go inside here and type in image source and then images because that's where our images are stored and then slider one dot jpeg is the name of our image so now we just need to do this for all all five of our images so you can have it doesn't have to be five necessarily but for this copy it down one two three four five and now we just need to change one to two and then one to three one two four and then the final one one two five and now if you look at the document now it's just a big mess of images just all on top of each other and it looks horrible but now now that we've done this, we can start to define some of the styles, which is great, because this is what we want to be doing. So we've already defined all our default parameters for margin, things like that. And now I'm going to define the paragraph text um, options. So I'm going to say Z index of, you know, make it really at the top, the most forefront of the document. And then font size. Um, for this tutorial, obviously you can do this however big you want or however small you want. But for this tutorial, I'm just going to do it maybe 100 no, 100. Yeah, okay, 100 pixels will do. And then give it text align, center, center to text. And then this bit's important. You need to position it absolutely so that it's on top of the image as opposed to positioned relatively where it'll be next to the image. So it won't be on the screen at the same time, which is what we want it to be on at the same time. So now set the width to 20%. And there's a really curious reason as to why we're doing this, which will become apparent later. Set the color of the text to white. And now I'm going to set my font family to the font that I chose before, which is just Lato. We need some padding on the top to push it down from the top a little bit. So padding top of maybe 100 pixels as well. Now again, you look at this, nothing will have happened yet. So we need to go back over to our PHP file, our HTML file. And now above the image, where it says image source, P, open a P tag. And in this I'm just going to type slide one. Copy this down again. This is a really long sort of process of... You know, because this, especially if there's a lot of images, you'd probably use PHP as opposed to HTML to kind of for each loop them all out. But for this case, we're just using making it the most minimalistic slider possible. Um, so we're only using HTML and CSS. Um, so now the final one, slider five. And again, this isn't important. This is all up to you. Whatever you want the the paragraph text to say. But now if you notice, see slide one. So we'll just go back in and define this a little bit better. So, our style, I think this is pretty much it for the HTML now. We have the main slider class, so now we need to make a figure just up here, which is just kind of another means of selecting all the divs inside. So now close it at the bottom here too, figure. 
Um, and now we go to our styling. That's I think that's it for the HTML now. So now this rest of this tutorial is going to be about styling it to work correctly. So the first thing that we need to do is define the slider. The slider container is the main control for this. So obviously we need overflow hidden in case anything, any text that you put in um, comes out of the um, boundaries. And now height, we can set it to whatever you want, but I'm going to set it to 350 pixels. I think that is about the right height for, for this. So now we're going to select the divs inside the figures, so slider, to select the slider. And then we're going to go inside the slider and select the figures. And then we're going to go inside the figures and select all the divs. So now we're going from slider, select all the figures in it. And then inside these figures, which is only one of, um, select all the divs. So now that's what we're going to be affecting here. So we set a width up again, 20%. And this will also make sense later on why we're doing this. And then float all of the, uh, the divs left. So now you'll see, you know, they're all next to each other, which isn't working right now, but that's because we're missing one key kind of factor. <clears throat> Excuse me. And now we're going to select the images inside the sliders. No slider, then figure, and then image. So we're selecting all the images inside the figures that are positioned inside the slider. I know it's kind of a weird hierarchy, but you can either go with it. So set width to 100% to set it to 100% of what it's parented to, which in this case, the images are parented to the divs, and the divs are set to 20% of the overall slider. So this is going to be 100% of the 20%, which if you'll realize later on again why 20% is so important. And then we have to float the images left also. So now we're going to select the figure. So let's just see how it looks so far. See, we kind of chopped the bottom part off here. Um, now um, we're going to select the figures alone. So slider, see how we're working our way down? Slider, figure, and then that's it. And then this is important now. So we need to position it relatively in case it's not already. Width of 500 pixels. And see, this is why 20%, because 20% of 500 is 100 and obviously we want it to be 100% of the of the width of the page. So that's why we've been doing 20% up until this point. And now we need to obviously set in case you've predefined any options anywhere. So set margin to zero, left to zero, because we want it to start at the very left of the page. We need to now set an animation. So this is what's going to make the slider work. Animation of maybe 20 seconds long, and we call it slide, slidey, and then infinite is how long we, you know, we, how many loops we wanted to do. So we wanted to go on forever. You can set this to five, six, one, you know, whatever you want, but we obviously want ours to be going on forever if it's going to be used for this purpose. And now we need to actually make the animation. So we type at keyframes and then name of our animation. So we've called this slidey. So at keyframe slidey. And then in here now is where we set the keyframes for our, animation so at zero percent which is at the very very start of the animation we want you know left the position left which we've defined here is zero we want to reinforce that zero percent and then that's the only option we're defining for zero percent and then as we go down we're going to say okay ten percent yep okay ten percent and this is important because from zero to ten percent of the animation we want it to be left completely we don't want anything to happen to it yet and then by 12%, which is going to be our time between the slides. So as it slides across, we want the slide process to take 2% of the overall animation. And then we're going to set left again now to minus 100. Okay, so right now we have the stepping stones for what is going to become the rest of the animation. So we're going to say 0% to very start, and then 10% have not happen in the 10% mark. And then from 10% to 12%, so for 2% of the overall animation, we want the slide process to take place. So now we're just going to go up 10 to 10 to in percentages because we go from 12% to 22%. And then we're going to say, during this part, don't do anything. This is where we're going to be allowing the viewers to see what's on the slider. So say minus 100% still. And then see 10 to 10 to. So in this part, we're going to say 24% because that's two. This is the slide process. Take left to minus what should we be? So minus two, minus 200%, which makes sense now. And I'm just going to do this part really fast and speed it up because it's literally the same process. So go up in installments of 10%, nothing happens, 2%, left minus 100%. And now as that does, like I say, I'm reinforcing this because it's really important for you to understand that the 2% margin that you're giving it there between 10 and 12 is the actual time you're giving the slider to slide. 
So you can set this however you want. I'm just working it out this way so it adds up to 100. So I'm going to speed this part up. You don't have to watch this part. So I'll see you in a second when this part's done. Okay, so I had to stop that there and just kind of do it all because it was kind of a lengthy process. But as you can see, it's the same thing but duplicated. So 0 to 10, nothing happens. 10 to 12, 2%, have that animation process take place. And then all that does is goes on all the way down to we get to 500, 400, sorry, where it's just going to be the final frame, the final slide, and then go backwards back to the beginning. So now, as you can see, this is the last part of the CSS. So if we go to the slider... It's done. So slide one, slide two, slide three, slide four, the final slide, and then it goes backwards to slide four, then to slide three again, slide two, slide one, slide two, and it carries on from there forever. But yeah, see here, we can set the animation speed to whatever we want. So we could set this to five seconds, and then obviously it'll go insanely fast. And I don't know, I understand it's probably going to be lagging so much for you right now because I don't really have the best screen capture capabilities. Um, but yeah, you can set it for, you know, 30 seconds, I think is a good time. And then as you watch it, you know, it's nice. You can read the, if there's that much information, if there's a couple of words, then I think I don't think that's too fast. I think that's fine. But of course, if you have a lot of words... You might want to slow this down to 60 seconds, not infinite, six, 60 seconds, and then you can watch it back, say slab one, it's going to take some time. Slide two. See, this is more reasonable for more text, so you, maybe you want to have it this way, but of course you can just change the, change the animation duration here to whatever you want, and then... You know, we can set it to six hours to 10 seconds to literally whatever you want. So, yeah, that's been this whole tutorial. And obviously, as you can see, look, it scales down. It always works. See, it always scales up and down. It's very responsive. Um, so, yeah, I like to make more of these videos. So if you enjoyed this tutorial at all, I've been kind of slow with the speech. I'm not really used to doing these kind of talking to a microphone sort of tutorials. So if you do like it, then please like the video and leave a comment or let me know if you didn't like it. I understand that I'm not the best at commentating and things like that, but I think I'm going to get better. So hopefully I can do more of these. Hopefully you like them. So I hope this has helped. The code files will be in the description. It's a free download, of course. So if you like these videos and you like the recode videos on this channel, please do subscribe and you'll get more of my videos in your sub box. So thanks a lot for watching this video and I hope to see you back here on this channel again for the next one. Okay, so I really felt the need to put this in. Um, it's just an explanation as to what is actually happening when you're taking away 100%, 100% in the animation. So the animation will start off from a default position where it will be like this. So this will be slider one, this pink will be slider one. And then when it minuses 100%, as all the images are floated left, when you minus 100%, it pulls the next slide across. And then at minus 100% will take the next one. And then minus 100 will take the next one. So the slide is changing like this. And then you get to the end. Oh, you know, so you get to the end of the slider. And then you minus, you add 100%, sorry. So then it will go that way again. Until you get all the way back, minus, minus, minus to here. And then the animation will start over again. And I just couldn't stress this enough in the video. I didn't think I made it clear enough. Um, but this is what's happening when you're taking away 100%, adding 100% in the animation in the CSS. So I just thought I'd put this in there to make it a little bit more obvious because I didn't really explain it all that well.